What is a contract loophole? My friends, a contract loophole is a figment of people's imagination. Contract loopholes are not real. Uh, I get people coming into my office and say, okay, I have this problem. I entered into a contract. How can I get out of it? And then they use the word loophole. And it's, I guess what people are trying to say is that they want to get out of a con, they have an obligation uh, and they want to get out of that obligation and but they don't want to be sued for any breach of contract. So. People use the term loophole, kind of signifying that if you read a term a certain way, then you can get out of a contract. And that's just not reality. The reality is, is that if there is, if there are unclear terms in a contract and it can be interpreted in multiple ways where one side sees it as a loophole and the other one views it as an obligation, you are setting yourself up for a lawsuit. And so that's something you want to avoid. So what you do instead is to prevent the problem by negotiating the contract properly. People are way too quick to sign contracts. They want to get the deal done. They think that they can read it on their own. But the reality is that there are so many contract principles that apply. And if you want to take advantage of those principles, if you want to create an actual, like actual language that would support your ability to get out of an obligation without being sued, then you want to do that upfront in the negotiation phase. So you do that by negotiating certain terms like, um, uh, condition precedents, contingencies, warranties and representations, and clear termination clauses that give you an out in certain situations. So I'll give you a few examples. So a contingency, I think a lot of people actually probably have encountered contingencies maybe without even realizing it. But if you've ever purchased a home, you've likely seen a mortgage contingency clause. And this clause um, for the buyer, it says that the buyer is only obligated to buy the property if the buyer can get financing um, and can get a mortgage. If the buyer is not able to obtain a mortgage, then the buyer does not have to close and the parties can part ways, right? So you can you, you can use that same principle in so many other ways. So think about it if you are starting a business and you um, may enter into a lease agreement or into a business to business relationship, you can put a contingency that says that this party is only obligated to, to, to have these obligations if, um, if they get certain licenses or if a certain event happens. And so if that event does not happen, then you can say, oh, well, the contingency did not materialize. We can part ways. Similarly, you can have a condition precedent, which basically says that both parties can walk away if a certain condition, um, uh, you know, does not happen. And then um, another example too of like warranties and, and representations, if one party makes certain promises, and again, you really want this in writing. You don't want them to say, well, the contract says this, but you told me that. No, put it in writing as, as an official warranty or representations so that it's clear why the parties entered into the contract and what, what was the party's expectation. And if one party breaches, like if there's a warrantying party, then and the other party can enforce that warranty. And so again, you want that very clear. And, and for example, with a warranty, you want it to be like, what kind of warranty? Are there exceptions to the warranty? So, I mean, like the, like I said, the, these principles are so underrated. I'm such a freaking contract genius that I wish people would just, would, would really take advantage of the negotiation process. People are so quick to say, okay, I just want to get this done. I, I, I can read it. I understood it. But the problem is that you might, you might understand what you do read, but do you know what you're missing, right? Do you know? Then you don't know. And that's why you go to an expert. Instead of having a loophole and trying to read a, uh, a clause and bend over backwards with certain um, interpretations and setting yourself up for litigation, take advantage of the negotiation phase to include terms that will help you in the event that you find yourself in a situation that you that you could have predicted like, oh, I, didn't, I don't have money. So um, how about I put a mortgage contingency or financing contingency? You, and you put those clauses in there to decrease your chances of being in a situation where you're accused of being in a breach of contract.